to these persistent challenges that we experience in the different communities. Increasingly, Africa is becoming home to institutions such as the Observer Research Foundation, the Center for SDGs, which is hosted here, the Africa Center for SDGs, the Smart Africa Secretariat, to mention, a, uh, to mention but a few, all that have a mandate to coordinate and support knowledge and experience sharing across the different member states. Such an, uh, such an approach is very instrumental in helping the continent to truly leapfrog and lead in the various de development stages. I believe the discussions earlier in the day took a deep, deep dive into is increasingly driven by trading across borders, technology, communication, as well as connectivity. And one cannot underscore sufficiently the potential of a single market for Africa, but also the impressing need to have an inclusive and sustainable approach towards how we onboard the marginalized communities across uh, the rest of the continent. When I was asked to speak today, um, a number of things uh, that came to mind because what they wanted for me to share with many of you that are here in this room is what uh, Rwanda's journey has been in, in, in terms of technology, the approach that we've taken as a country, but also to share that experience for the different countries that will be able to replicate a similar model. But at the same time, I'm here to listen and learn uh, on how the other countries and communities have been able to implement uh, you know, the agenda of becoming digital economies. When you look at the different traditional industries, whether it's agriculture, healthcare, public service, we increasingly see the role of technology in driving agricultural productivity, the role of technology in driving access and quality healthcare to, to our people, the role of technology in improving quality education across the different communities, but also the role of technology in addressing issues around climate change. Africa's rapid growth necessitates a shift from heavy reliance on these traditional industries that I just mentioned, especially the increasing need and also the increasing pressure on the natural resources. And technological innovation is going to be essential for this transition to happen. Rwanda's journey uh, of onboarding and using technology as a key driver for our growth and development process dates back to uh, 2000 when as a country coming out of the tragedy that we had gone through, we had to make a very deliberate um, effort and, and you know, to think about how we were going to use technology as a key driver of our social economic development process. We were starting from a zero base and so what we immediately understood was very critical to do was how do we put in place the institutional frameworks the regulatory environment that was going to be conducive to attract the different players that would come in and make an impact in how technology was going to transform our economy. And once that was put in place, we started to think about what are those foundational aspects that are going to be crucial to really putting in place a digital economy that we all envision to have. And infrastructure was the very first thing that we quickly knew we had to put together efforts, we had to put in place the right investments as a government, put in place the right environment to attract the different um, uh, players to come in and roll out the fiber infrastructure that was required, whether it was putting in place data center facilities because we're going to be you know, digitizing all the services and putting all the information online for our citizens. And quickly we knew that we needed to think about partnerships between government, the private sector, development partners, and the communities to really think through what was the best way to roll out infrastructure that was going to be central to really um, leapfrogging in this digital economy. Once that was done, and I believe you, in the earlier presentations, uh, just to avoid any overlap in the discussions that happened earlier, when that was done, we realized that now that we have the infrastructure, what do we need to do to build the services that were part and parcel of our citizens' day-to-day -day life that would help them to maximize and leverage that infrastructure that we had put in place as a country. I believe earlier in the discussions you had, um, uh, you had someone from Rwanda who was presenting 
um, the Rwanda Online solution, which is really a centralized government platform where all government services are provided online. So this is one of those examples where we thought if we're going to transform public service delivery, if we're going to bring services closer to the citizens, if we're going to be, as a government, to be the early adopters of technology, then we needed to think about how we were going to drive these services closer to citizens, and that's why we put in place a platform like Rwanda Online. But that wasn't just on the government effort, because even the private sector took you know, the investment that was required and started to roll out solutions in the different sectors that were leveraging technology to drive faster access of these services and more efficient delivery of many of these services. Fast forward, we are at a point where, as a country, we realize we have the infrastructure, the private sector is growing and building many of these solutions, but one critical point remains, which is really building the critical mass of talent that is required within our economy to be able to move away and shift from becoming consumers of the different technology solutions that we purchase and procure from you know, many other countries to actually becoming co-creators of these solutions. And the only way you can achieve that is really thinking about building that capability on the continent within our different countries for people that truly understand what are those pressing challenges that we face on a day-to-day -day basis, people that are really involved in these challenges and are able to create solutions that are going to respond to many of these challenges. And so that's our focus uh, as a country in really building that talent pool, in attracting the different Africans across the continent that have the desire to create solutions that are going to create an impact in an inclusive way onboarding everyone that is at the bottom of the, of the pyramid. So in a nutshell, that is pretty much what our journey has, looks like as a country. And we're very cognizant that emerging technologies beyond the role that they are currently playing. Um, when you think about the fourth industrial revolution, which is really already underway, talk about AI, big data, machine learning, nanotechnologies, and any other exciting advances that are shaping the economies and communities, we also know that emerging technologies are going to play a fundamental role in driving our future growth into becoming a green economy. That's not just for us as a country as Rwanda, but for the rest of the region and as well as the, con uh, the continent. We know that there's a lot of potential, and I wanted to end on this because I know the next set of uh, speakers that are going to be speaking this evening as the very last uh, discussion are going to be tackling issues to do with uh, the green economy, climate change, and we believe that technology is going to play a fundamental role in providing cleaner um, you know, solutions, helping countries to, use, to, to better use and more efficiently the natural resources that we have, and as a result, we'll be able to have more sustainable infrastructure, re, um, reduced pollution, and better waste management. So today and the, day, and the few days to come, which is probably a day and a half that is left, as we tackle all these issues that are very central um, to our communities, to our development and growth, I believe that technology is going to be that key driver that can help respond to in a much efficient and more sustainable manner to how we respond to many of these challenges we have. So I wish you all great deliberations, and I do hope that at the end of it all, we have one or two things that we've learned, and that we continue to strengthen such a platform that allows us to share our experiences, but in many ways allows us to co-design solutions that we all are facing in the different aspects of the world where we all live. I thank you very much.